king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Transcribed from out of the West and into your home, riding the range of mystery and adventure, blazing the trail of Western story and song, with Roy Rogers riders, that bungling wrangler Clackety, played by Horace Murphy, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, Clackety, and I are fixing to ride to Squaw Creek on a little business for the bank. We haven't been over that way for quite some time now because the trails have been snowbound. Some of the ranchers out there have been isolated for several weeks, and from rumors we've heard, they've been having other troubles, too. Before you can get this stuff phased out to my place, Dick. They won't. You uh, sold your last bunch of cattle through Bruce Baker, didn't you? Well, yes. What's that got to do with it? You mean Cliff Bogard won't hold supplies for a man who sells cattle through somebody else? Well, Baker offered me no, more. No, 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 no. Bogard don't refuse, but uh, here's what happens. I go to Bogard and ask him to haul these things out to your place, and he turns me down. Says it ain't safe. Then you hire somebody else to take them, and by golly, Bogart's right. They get attacked along the road. Your supplies get destroyed. Your driver gets shot up. Well, I don't know there's any connection, Nort. All I know is what happens. Well, I need these supplies. And I ain't going to be scared by a four-flusher like Cliff Bogart. Ain't nobody going to stop me from getting them home. <laughs> I could hire. I need one with me when I start home in the morning. A man who'll shoot first and ask questions later. A mean man. You happen to know anybody can fill that bill? Well, I, I may, Nort, but you need some rest. If I can find the man I'm thinking of, I'll have him here to meet you in the morning. <laughs> Both of them. Roy Rogers and Cackety. Well, Gail, I asked you for a gunslinger. Don't you think we can handle a gun, Nort? Why don't you give him a demonstration, Roy? But the thing I wanted a gunslinger for was... Sit down here, Nort. We know about your trouble, Nort. When do you want these gunslingers? I aim to hire me a wagon and team from the liver stable and make another try to get home this morning. You load your wagon, Nort. Cackety and I have one call to make. It won't take over a few minutes, and then we'll be ready to leave. <laughs> was on your mind, Rogers? Oh, nothing much, Bogard. Just wondering what price you were paying for cattle these days. Well, now you know. How's the freighting business, Cliffy? Fine. Why? Just a wondering. Uh, we promised to help North Spitzer do a little freighting ourselves this morning, Bogard. You did, eh? Yeah. It'd be too bad if anything happened to us while we were helping North, though. 
We'll be carrying money. The bank here is transferring over to Squaw Creek, in addition to the supplies North's taken out to his ranch. Terrible mistake. Terrible. Why'd you do it, Roy? Why'd you tell Bolgard you'd be carrying all that money on this trip? If Bolgard's behind these raids, the money will be a little extra inducement. Inducement? For what? To have his raiders come at you? Exactly. Dale, as soon as you have time, I wish you'd ask the sheriff to fix up an ambush just outside the cabin near Three Points. I kind of think we'll be visiting there before this job's done. Spitzer is seated on a wagon load of supplies, driving across the snowbound country toward his ranch. Roy and Clackety are on their horses, following closely. As yet, nothing has disturbed the calm of the winter's day. Nothing happened yet. Monotonous, ain't it? Just be patient, Claggedy. If them there buzzards is a coming after us, I wish they'd come. This here waiting is a giving me the weak trembles. There's still plenty of time. Don't relax for a single second. If you do, we may be whipped. It's all over, I guess. I'd have sworn they would have at least made a try for us. Guess leaving the money to the bank is just a waste of time, huh? And now we'll have to make another trip for it. Terrible thing. Hey, Roy, I got the horses tended to. Hey, why are they eating? Why don't you and Craig N- North? Fine. About all we've accomplished this trip was to get your supplies here. Well, that's something. All this time wasted. I could have took a nap. I'm sorry, Claggedy. Oh, that's all right. When I take naps, I don't sleep at night. That gives me the miseries. Take him, Kerfield, quick! Look out, Claggedy! The door closes. Men leap from the shadows of the room. A fist plunges toward Claggedy. The next, he goes down from the lake. Eight men, ten, brush the limping Norton Spitzer aside to gang up on Roy. He defends himself bravely. Sending one outlaw after another, sprawling to the floor. But the others, there are too many of them. They hit, they kick, they gouge. Roy can't stand up with this many. He's going down, beaten by the sheer weight of numbers. Roy is on the floor. Uh, you uh, got their guns, Griffield? Yeah. All of them, including the sneak guns? I heard Roger's holding. Yeah, story. we got them all, Barker. You heard wrong, Barker. When I carry guns... They're in my belt, where they can be seen. Just stand there quiet, Rogers. When we want something from you, we'll say so. How about that load of supplies, Griffield? we got to keep the head man happy. Uh, head and Jack went out to burn the supplies. Hey, you want any help tying their wrists? No, uh, it's all done. Now, Rogers, we'll give you a little attention. Yes. Now, wait a minute, Barker. I'll handle this. Now, look, Rogers. Nobody likes to kill a man. That's something we won't do unless we have to. If you're smart, you'll tell us where the money is and go free. How do I know I will go free, though? Yeah, we'll leave you in a safe place, all three of you, and send a message to the sheriff telling where you can be found. Now, where's the money? I know you might try that old cabin out near Three Points. I figured we might get into trouble on this trip, so I didn't try bringing it along. Well, I... thanks, Rogers. <laughs> See, Burger, that's how it's done. Yeah. We'll have the boys take Spitzer up to the place at Indian Run. You and me will go to that cabin at three points. Well, what about Rogers? Uh, him and his partner will go with us. You don't mind, do you, Rogers? No. In fact, I'm anxious to go to three points with you. <laughs> Hey, yo, 
all go into the cabin first, Rogers. You and your partner. Sure. All right, you first, Rogers, and we'll follow. All right. That money better be here. Now close the door, will you, Parker? You men with Rogers, break your hand. What? Who is that? It is the law. We've got the cabin to run it. The law. I'm afraid it's all over, gentlemen. Oh, we're slick. <laughs> Come on out. Put your hands in the air. Hey, Rogers has tricked us, Barger. I'll take care of him. <laughs> you can't do that to Roy. Now, hold it, Barger. we got troubles enough. Don't start nothing more. Come on in, Sheriff. We've got a posse here, Roy. Stay where you are, Sheriff. First man who moves towards this door tastes lead. We're moving in. You better have those hands up. Now, get back. Don't come any closer. Keep that out of the way, Sheriff. Let's kill him. Let's kill Roger right now. We'll have to flash them out, men. Hold it, Wagger. Sheriff, I'm telling you something. First man who starts for this cabin, the first shot that's fired in this direction, Rogers and his partner die. You can't block the law. You try it and see. And here's something else. We're coming out of the cabin, walking to our horses and riding away. You try to stop us, and we drop Rogers. Sheriff, they mean it. Come on, Sheriff. Come on. Don't let him call your hand. You can't bargain with the law, Crippy. We're coming in. We're waiting for you, Sheriff. The law can't back down now from these rattlers, no matter what they say they'll do. are being held by the two outlaws in a cabin at three points. Outside, Dale and the sheriff have a posse surrounding the cabin, ready to move in on them. Until now, they hesitated because of the outlaws' threat to kill Roy and Clackety. But Roy has urged him to disregard the threats, and the sheriff has made up his mind. You can't bargain with the law, Griffey. We're coming in. That's it, sheriff. Come on. There's something you lawmen out there don't know. Rogers and Clackety are helpless. Their hands are tied. Rattler, if I could get my hands loose. We're not coming in there, Roy. Sheriff, we'll have to let him go. Well, forget it, Sheriff. You're the law. All right, Clippy, you win. We won't try to come in. And we can't blast you out. But we will sit right here and hold you where you are until hunger or thirst or cold changes your mind and you'll walk out with your hands in the air. <laughs> For the first few hours, the battle between the Posse and the outlaws is deadlocked. The only action is an occasional shot fired by one of the outlaws who sees, or thinks he sees, a member of the sheriff's Posse outside. The Posse does not dare fire back for fear of wounding Roy or Clackety. When darkness comes to Paradise Valley, the situation remains the same. How much longer are they going to stay out there? Rogers, for your information... As soon as it's light enough outside so we can see, I'm going to press the sheriff a little more. We'll get out of here then, all right, or you won't live. You talk big, Chris, you. Before you put any lead through us, we'll give the sheriff all the evidence we have against both of you. And Cliff Bolgard, too. Bolgard? You're working for Bolgard. You have to be. Outside of the men at the bank, Bolgard's the only man who knew we were carrying the money. So you had to get your information from him. We'd better check to see that posse ain't sneaking up on us. You take that end of the cabin, I'll take this one again. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad to pick off a few lawmen tonight. Yeah, wait till it's light. We'll do all right then. Clackety, be real still. Don't move. Uh-huh. Roy, if either of them look over here, do something to attract their attention your way. Well, what do you got in your mind, Roy? Well, this is a long chance, Clackety. It may work, though, and if it does, we'll be free. Roy slides closer to the wood box near the fireplace. His hand still tied behind his back. He manages to take a twig from the box. Now he moves around with his back to the fire until he is as close as the heat will permit. He draws out a glowing piece of wood with the twig. He slides it to within a few inches of where he is sitting. Now he places his wrists directly on the glowing wood. The ropes... Roy is trying to burn the ropes off his hands. Roy, no. 
got to get loose, Claggedy. But not that way. You'll burn yourself. Give me that, Barker. Nothing at all on this side. There's nobody out here either. See, Roy, let me do that. Save yourself for the fight. Oh, I'll be all right. Well, how can you be? Your wrist. Oh, oh burn my wrist. Just a rope. I wonder if they could have left without our seeing them. I'd be. If I ever get loose, I'll tear them my buds to ribbons for making you do a thing like this here, Roy. I've got it, Claggedy. The rope's burned through. I'll have my hands free as quick as I get these loops on my own. Well, there's nothing up there. Hurry, Roy. Well, that's going to work out right. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for. Sit tight, Claggedy. Don't move. I'll have to take them along. Rogers, we want that money. And this time, we're not fooling. You want the money? Hey, Rogers, you move! Sheriff, come on! We're taking them! Roy leaps toward Lager, driving hard sledgehammer blows which come about from his jaw to his waist. Lager drops. He's down, finished. Roy turns to Griffield, hitting him hard in the midsection. Griffield is unhurt, but he is knocked off balance. Faggotty's foot shoots out and trips Griffield. Griffield falls. He's down. Great work, Faggotty. It's all right. Roy, I didn't expect to see you on your feet. Come on, you two. Get up. Is somebody untie my hands. These two, the men who've been bothering the freight wagons, Roy. They're part of the crew, Sheriff. The rest of the gang is at end in run. And Cliff Bogart's our boss. Somebody untie my hands. What did you say, Clackety? Uh, somebody untie my hands. Feel like going in the bathroom, Roy? Sheriff, you head these two towards jail. Dale and Clackety and I will get Bogart, and the rest will be easy. <laughs> Probably still in his bed asleep, boy. Let me go in and get him. Come on, Claggedy. Dale, you keep watch on the door in case he tries to rush us. He won't get past me. Uh, what come in here this? Rogers! We've come for you, Bogard. <laughs> Are we gonna bust up your business? You can't bring it to a man's house. Get to one side, Claggedy. Oh, use a gun on us, huh? Let me get that there, buddy. Stay back, Claggedy! <laughs> Boy, what is it? Is that shot? Uh, this rattler pulled a gun. Climb back on your feet, Bogard. Here, yeah, I want to know what this is all about. I'll tell you what it's all about. You've been blackjacking ranchers into selling cattle through your agency. When they sold through Bruce Baker or somebody else, you refused to freight their supply. Well, there's no crime in that. No, but there is crime in overturning and destroying wagons when ranchers try to freight their own supplies. You can't prove anything. We've like... already got proof. And you're coming out to end and run and have your riders surrender peaceably. You're doing it in order to make your jail sentence as small as possible. Come on, Bogart. Call to him. Tell him to get out here. Don't fool with him, Roy. You fellows in there! The game is up! They've got us! Better come on out! Come peaceable! It's all over for us. The beaten riders file out of Indian Run Cave, their hands in the air. Their day is over. Their savage faces frighten no one now. Within an hour, they are with their chief, Cliff Bolgard, and his two lieutenants, Harry Barger and Bob Criffield, in jail. <laughs>
Tom Hargis, 
with script by Ray Wilson and music by Frank Wirtz. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.